things are still not perfect and it's kind of that guy that says an idea that's completely out of the scope but then you start brainstorming and bouncing on top of it and then it leads you somewhere you hadn't expected. We've, you know, always inform ourselves about the latest technology that, uh, you know, we're releasing the market. I love to spend some time experimenting with these tools. It's almost like learning a new language, right? If you travel and you know a bit of the language, you might get better insights, you might get better informed. Most recently, we've been playing a lot with AI tools, which resulted in the interest of creating uh, our first piece uh, that we call Afterlife. I can't take no loss. Huh? I don't even know what it costs. Huh? So I'd say like 90% of the content was creating using traditional process uh, of filming, editing, uh, and then comping every, every parts together. The magic really happened when we started to run it through the Gen 1 system. Um, and how could various results from our sequence. Uh, and then the Gen 1 treatment would sort of cancel all of these technical imperfections, like affecting even the lighting, uh, the texture. We like that, that process a lot. It's almost this sort of brainstorming relationship you have with the tool, where it might bring you somewhere you haven't really thought of. And so when it comes to creative process in relation with the evolution of the AI tool, I think we're still in a stage where there's a lot of tools that will optimize the workflow uh, and others that uh, you can use as artists to sort of uh, either execute some ideas in a much, much faster way or uh, use the tool to enhance an idea that you have. And I know this is a question that still divides the filmmaking industry a lot, but uh, I feel like on the creative possibility realms of thing, I'm very excited to see these opportunities come to life.